It's one of the biggest celebrations in Washington, D.C., and it happens every year. The 4th of July, a time for parades, food, and fireworks. But this year's gathering on the National Mall has other significance. It's the first time a major event is happening in D.C. since the Boston Marathon bombings, a tragedy that tested first responders' readiness. So people are asking... Is the nation's capital ready to respond to a major event like a terror attack? If the emergency medical service staff and equipment are any indicators, the answer is a resounding no. Even though the Pentagon's right across the bridge in Virginia, we all, 9-11 is 12 years ago, but we still can't forget that. I mean, I don't wish it on anybody, but unfortunately we could have a tragic event tomorrow to the same magnitude, and we're not ready. A recent audit of D.C.'s Fire and Emergency Medical Services Department found that only 58 of 111 ambulances are working properly. Catching a taxi during peak hours in the district is already hard enough. Now, when you're in a life-threatening emergency, every second counts, and the last thing you want to be doing is waiting for an ambulance. But given EMS vehicle shortages in the district these days, you might have better luck catching a cab than waiting for an ambulance. Taxi. Take the case of Officer Sean Hickman, a D.C. motorcycle cop who waited on the side of the road for an ambulance for over 20 minutes after being hit by a car. And the vehicles that are in service have problems of their own. In May, an ambulance broke down with a shooting victim in tow. That man later died. And when it comes to personnel, the district is falling behind significantly. Of the 242 EMS shifts, only 16 are fully staffed. Let me say that the fact that in two and a half years, there's still no way to become a certified paramedic in D.C. because there's no training, no program that, that does that is unconscionable. Meanwhile, 911 calls have risen 22 percent in the past four years alone. Population growth within the district accounts for part of that increase. The higher number of commuters coming into the city each day also contributes. Fire Chief Kenneth Ellaby has come up with a redeployment plan to switch the schedules of paramedics to fully staff the busiest times, but it would require taking away EMS personnel from the rest of the day instead of hiring new people. The system's already stretched to the max. We're in a crisis, and to rob Peter to pay Paul would only make everything worse. And that is something the D.C. City Council is not willing to allow. If the mayor wants to add services, he can do that, and we're going to be clear about that. Just you can't take services away without coming to the council. And so I think that's clear. Don't, you know, otherwise it's just a spiral downward that we've got to stop. A recent city council committee vote struck down that plan, and Councilwoman Mary Che is now demanding for Fire Chief Ellerby to step down. But with Fourth of July celebrations right around the corner, it seems D.C.'s emergency medical services could use a little resuscitation of their own.